I'm pretty fortunate to get to be able to work with people across all industries and all functional areas. And one thing that I see is there's a certain group of people that get immediate value from using Tableau, uh, and that group is supply chain people. So what I see them doing and what I've helped them do are find ways to save time and to find more cost savings opportunities in their supply chains. Uh, and in this video, what I want to do is just boil down maybe the three or four top things that they're doing that find them those quick time savings and those uh, cost savings opportunities within their data. The first thing that I see people doing is just cleaning up their data. So a lot of times supply chains have data that's all over the place. They might have data in Excel sheets and an SAP system and some other database and all that data together is an ugly picture. So what I want to help you understand is what they're doing with Tableau data sources to make more sense of their data. So the first thing we'll walk through is this thing called a Tableau data source. I always liken it to a lens to your data. So if you were just looking at your data by itself, it's, it's tough, it might be tough from time to time to decipher what that means, especially to someone that doesn't know cryptic names or values. So what we want to do there is put a lens in front of that data so that you can clearly see what picture you want them to see in that background. And one thing that's really cool about Tableau is you can use Tableau Server to share this common lens across your team. So everybody's using the same calculations, the same aliases for supplier names, things like that. And what this prevents is people from seeing different lenses of that data. So if you think about going into a meeting where people have different sets of numbers, um, you can avoid that completely with Tableau using these data sources. So rather than having people look at this lens of data, and then also that lens of data, and then also that lens of data, the other two, which no one should ever see, uh, you can just use these Tableau data sources and ensure that everybody's working from the same set of data. Let's pivot now to Tableau, and I'll show you how to create that lens of your data so that we can have a more practical environment for our business users to work in. So in this case, I've got my data in Excel. I might have it in some other data source over here, but this one just happens to be an extract from our system in Excel. So I just drag that in, and I go to my sheet to work with that, all right? And I see some field names over here that don't make sense, like LEIF. I know that that's German for supplier, like Lieferant means supplier in German. So I'll rename that to supplier. Now this will make sense for all of my end users when they go into look at this data source they, who, who might not otherwise know that LEIF or LIEF means supplier. And we can take that a step further and add in a tooltip for them. So these are our suppliers. I'll say OK. Now when they mouse over that field, they can see a little textual guidance to let them understand what that field actually is. That little comment has huge applications for calculated fields where they might not know what those fields mean. Down here I see it again, uh, LEAF LG. So that's supplier number, so let's rename that one also. Now as we interrogate our data, we might find some more opportunities to clean up this data. So let's say that we want to create a calculated field. We want to create a field that shows us the delta between the goods we received versus what we ordered. So we'll create a calculated field. There's received quantity minus order quantity. And we'll call this delta quantity. Okay. So we've got our delta quantity, we've got our suppliers, and let's guide ourselves to select the bar chart. Now we can see some of these suppliers are really under shipping what they owe us. And then I see over here there are three suppliers that are like named and I might want to group them together. So this is pretty big for supply chain organizations where sometimes purchasers enter in freehand what the suppliers are. So someone might always enter in OOI, others might enter in, I don't know, like OOI Inc, whatever. So if I just select all three of them, I can group them together and now I can get a consolidated view of what the shortage is there. So that's one where I just manually selected each individual one. What I can also do is go to my supplier and I can create a group and I can say, well, find anything that contains OOI. Find all. And now I can create a group and say this is OOI International or whatever it is. Apply. 
what that does and how that's different from the manual selection is that's kind of a programmatic approach. So anytime in the future, if some knucklehead enters in OOI North America, when they were supposed to just select that OOI itself, it will consolidate that into just that group. So that's one way to that Tableau really helps people in supply chain consolidate their data. Our end goal here was to simplify the lens to our data that our users are working with and also to ensure that everybody's working from the same set of data. And that's truly what we did. First, let's look at the simplification of this lens of our data. So it's pretty clear here. If we look at our original data source, we've got a bunch of different fields there, some of which have uh, cryptic names. So we've simplified them. And then we've organized things in the folders. And like I said, we've just cleaned this up a whole lot. Now we want to share this with the rest of our team. So we can publish this up to server in just a few clicks and we can make sure that only people that are allowed to see this project or only certain people that we set in the permissions can see this lens to that data. But if they are allowed to see it, then all that they need to do to connect to this data source is go ahead and select Tableau Server. So this will route them back to the end data source, find that data source. Maybe they want to search for it up top. And we find GRIR. OK, that's great. Now let's go to our sheet and do some analysis. Now we can see that this icon changed a little bit. That's Tableau's way of telling you, I routed this connection through Tableau server via that lens. And now they can go in and you know find some meaningful analysis, like, well, hey, which ones of our vendors have undersupplied us? And it looks like OOI has. So maybe in the future, we're cautious when we do any business transaction with them. So in short, with respect to cleaning up your data and governing your data, there's a whole lot that you can do with Tableau data sources and Tableau server together to ensure that everybody's working from the same set of data that either IT or the supply chain analysts that are in charge of the supply chain data have control over their data and they can ensure consistency across all analyses. Visualizing data in supply chain is a no-brainer. So if we looked at this dashboard that's just easily available on the Tableau website along with a bunch of others, and we were looking at a table of data, just a raw table in Excel or Notepad or something, we wouldn't see the, the amount, the sheer amount of cities that we delivered to from this uh, Detroit plant. So by, by visualizing this, we can look at this and say, well, hey, it might make sense to create another fulfillment center in the Northeast somewhere like New York. and might cut down on our costs and our delivery times. This dashboard is an example of an operational view into uh, deliveries or fulfillments. But if we pivot to a more strategic dashboard, this is one that I helped a, a customer create a while ago, uh, we can see some more higher level metrics and we can dig into those metrics as needed. So in this type of dashboard, it's, it's very simple. I just kept it uh, as high level as I could. So the three main KPIs that they were interested in were late deliveries, operational risk, and vendor score. And then we colored them appropriately. So right now, on the whole year to date, 0.8% of deliveries have been late. Like that's a little bit concerning, especially seeing this recent spike. Our operational risk right now is medium. We're going to ignore that. Vendor score terrible, so we might want to dive into that later. But let's uh, let's take a look at late deliveries. So we see that the, there's the spike over here, and we're going to follow the prompt on the screen just to click the percent for details. And this will jump us into our late goods received detail. So we can see our late deliveries over here. We've got 16 of them. And that results in $96,000 worth of cost. And I wonder what the downstream effect in our sales orders is. And that's $130,000 or more. So that's an issue. Uh, we look down here. We see, yeah, pretty consistently through July, we had late orders. And we're looking at this year to date here. So to see nothing all the way up till July and then to see a spike and the climbing costs all the way to $96,000, uh, something happened there. So we need to investigate this. So maybe we just want to see the second half of July. We'll just select them, eight late deliveries during that time period. Now we can get on the phone with any one of these vendors and say, well, hey, what's the story with solar panels, Red Hook? Why are they always late? Or why have they been late in the month of July? So something like this can take you from a strategic level, like the high level KPIs that we saw earlier, all the way down to the low level metrics that we just dove into. And there's one other dashboard I wanted to show uh, that's really helpful for a variety of analyses with respects to incoming or outgoing deliveries. And this one happens to be customs delay analysis. But we can see very clearly 
uh, actually there's a color legend that's being cut off by my screen cap right there, the average days that things usually get held up from source country and source city. So some of these, they're really getting hung up in customs and we want to understand better why and maybe when. So up top, we're currently zoomed in on London, maybe we want to see Bangkok and you know, just hone in on shipments to Bangkok. But if we look at this and we happen to know that we've got multiple days worth of data in here, maybe we want to chop this up and see if there are particular days where there were issues with inbound uh, shipments um, to, uh, to our um, distribution facilities. So what we can do is just edit this directly in the browser. We don't even need desktop to do this. So what you can see that I did here is I took on, from over here, I took on my date onto columns and I just chopped it up by weekday. So I'll, I'll do that again really quickly. So let's say I dragged on my date up there. Tableau gives us all these options with dates. It walks through the hierarchy of a date field, which is also pretty unique. Um, so things like quarter, they aren't in a conventional date string, but Tableau derives that. So now I'll just drill down to day and we'll see which days had the most issues. So just visually here, I can see the 27th had the most issues. Maybe I want to understand what weekday that was. Was that a Monday or a Tuesday? Oh, it was Wednesday. I remember on Wednesday uh, there was a terrorist threat in London. So, you know, we had to, I, I assume they had to park customs operations and maybe that's why things got held up. But just visually seeing your data can lend a lot of insight to your operations. Having walked through all this supply chain management content, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask all of you to download Tableau Desktop if you don't have it already and start interrogating your supply chain data. There's definitely some nuggets of insight in there that are valuable to the company. We'll routinely hear supply chain savings of over a million dollars that are found by just regular old analysts. And then beyond that, as far as personal time savings, the potential is pretty immense. So again, we'll pretty routinely hear people that say, you just gave me back my Mondays because I never have to go through these Excel spreadsheets and reformat them and redo the calculations that I had to do on a weekly basis. And for that, I love you. So that, that's always comforting to hear. Uh, beyond that, if, if you need some words of inspiration, I might check out this YouTube video by Tableau CEO Christian Chabot where he talks about the pervasiveness of data, how it's everywhere, and how it has huge potential to improve our lives in a, a variety of different ways.